Let's all turn our Bibles to 2 Timothy chapter 4. 2 Timothy chapter 4. Let's go to our familiar verses. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 6 through 8. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 6 through 8. The title of today's message is, You Have to Finish, You Have to Finish, You Have to Finish. The Bible says, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 6, For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight, I have finished my course, I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. Brother Caleb, can you please pray for the message? For saving us sinners from hell and uh, letting us gather today on this Sunday to be with the brethren and to listen to your word, Lord Father. Thank you for the traveling mercy that you gave us as we went to and came back from the blowout. Up in San Jose, Lord. Father, as Pastor Jay preaches your word to us, help us really keep attentive, uh, no matter how tired or distracted or uh, whatever we may be, Father. Please help us to focus on your word, Lord. And really fill us with the Holy Spirit. Help us to be able to say that we have fought the good fight and grace on course, Lord. We really want to be able to say that to you, Lord. Um, Father, please bless us. We can't do this without you. Uh, fill Pastor Jay with the Holy Spirit. Yes. Help us to speak Amen. your word, Lord. In Jesus Christ, let me pray. Amen. 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 Finish. The word finish is very significant. Finish could be close, you've concluded, you've completed, bring to an end. You, know, you close the deal. Apostle Paul had a great finish in his life. He says he fought a you know, good fight and he finished course and kept the faith. Wherever you are in your Christian walk, it doesn't matter what happened in the past. What matters is that how you finish. And many Christians don't finish. They don't finish their race. That's what devil wants. One of the main themes of you know, blowout was you have to finish. It's a battle. You and I are in this battle, you know, spiritual battle. You have your physical battles. But at the end, most important thing is that you have to finish. You have to cross that line. You know, the whole goal of many people starting marathon is to finish the marathon. Yeah. It might take six hours. That's pretty good time, actually. Yes. You know, 25 miles in six hours, eight hours, a lot of people, nine hours, 10 hours. And you see stragglers out there. You know, people are trying to close things up. But they're going to finish. Amen. 12 hours. You know, maybe race starts at 6. Hey, light's still out there. 6 p.m. You're finishing. Keep going. In your Christian walk, whatever happens, you have to finish. Yes, sir. You have to get right with the Lord. Get right with the Lord. But at the end of the day, you have to finish. Amen. And... The saddest thing that we see in the ministry is people who started out very well in their you know, Christian faith and then their race, but they drop off in the middle. Like, we've seen many cases gung-ho about doing Lord's thing. In the ministry, you see him. You know. That's why sometimes if you guys... You feel like introvert, you feel timid, you know, doing things. You're the people that God actually uses, right? God doesn't normally use people who's always, you know, gung-ho, who's always running, who's always shouting, who's always, you know, in the attention of other people's eyes. Yes. Because many times, those folks, what happens is that their pride takes over. Their knowledge puff is up. Yes. And if going gets tough, as they say, they wilt. They just break. God doesn't look for those people. Yeah. God's looking for people who know that 
you are imperfect. I'm imperfect. I mean, if you are afraid of speaking in front of people, God's going to use you. If you're afraid of, you know, talking to people about Jesus Christ, God's going to use you as long as you have willingness to finish. You've started when you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Now you're in the army of Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, commander in chief is Jesus Christ. Woo! And he is giving you the orders, you know, through our good old King James Bible. Yes, sir. Every day, you know, every moment. And it's up to you to finish those orders. Because if the order says, you know, abstain from all appearance of evil, right? It gets really hard. But just because you failed first few times doesn't mean that you're going to fail the rest of your life. Right. That's what devil wants you to do. Yeah. Devil wants to use those failures against you. Sometimes you and I don't pray. Sometimes you and I don't preach. Sometimes you and I are mean to brethren. Sometimes you and I say stuff that we shouldn't say. True. But does that mean that, okay, I'm going. You know, I'm, so this is the finish line. Does that mean that I'm going to just stop? Amen. No, I'm still going to go. It's just that you might go, instead of going 60, 70 miles per hour, you only go like a few miles, but you're still moving. Yes. Even if it's 0 0.0001 miles per hour, you still got to go. Press forward. I mean, you got to crawl, yes. right? I mean, during the war, a lot of people have to crawl their way to places. Why? Because there are bombs everywhere. There are gunfire everywhere. I mean, if you're standing up, you're going to get shot. So you are crawling. I don't know about you. Crawling is not easy. And especially if you gain some weight, it gets harder and harder and harder. But babies, you know, they love to crawl. But can you expect that baby who's at that exit door to come to me within five seconds? No, it's going to take that baby some time. A lot of times, Christians act like babies. But as babies, right, you have to act like baby, but you have to continue. If baby needs a food, and if that baby sees a milk over here, and baby goes, I need food to survive, they're going to crawl their way. It might take hours and hours. They're going to grab it because they know it's a necessity. Yeah. But as Christians, how do you feel about the Word of God, right? It's your food source. If you're not going after it like that baby with their might to get full out of it, you cannot finish the race. You can't. If I'm weak, I can't finish. Think about it. You're running a marathon. It's a race. And if you don't have any nutrient source, if you don't have water, if you don't have protein, if you don't have carbs, if you don't have any type of food that's needed to sustain you from continuously walking or running, you cannot finish. Amen. Then you have to look at yourself as a Christian. I mean, it is a very, very common question that you've heard many, many times, but you have to reiterate. You have to check your heart. I mean, am I really eating the source that I need to eat? Is this food that important to me? Because if you don't eat, what happens? You don't grow. Yeah. If you don't eat, you can't do anything for the Lord. Right. And what good is it if you're a saved Christian, you say you love the Lord, but you don't do anything for the Lord? Yeah. Words are cheap. Right. Yeah. You have to take it into action. You got to be doers of the word. Amen. That's why not just Christians, but as a general human being, you have to finish whatever you have started. Yes. I mean, that is the most, you know, important part of a human being who actually does anything in life are those who start and they actually finish. Can you imagine if you have so many unfinished businesses in your life? I mean, common thing, right? Oh, you go to school to finish, right? Uh, you go to elementary school, for example, and you want to finish. You know, whether it's fifth grade or sixth grade, it's changing nowadays. 
man, if you started first and second grade, are you going to be like, you know what? It's too hard for me. I'm going to quit. I haven't seen too many, you know, first or second graders quit their school. They usually go on and graduate. Sure. And junior high, you know, many of them do. But starting high school, people stop, you know. Yeah. Like certain areas, there's only like 50% or less graduation rate, yes. right? And obviously, a lot of colleges, you know, people don't finish. They start yes. and they don't finish. Some of them for legitimate reasons. But for many, it's because the word finish is not that important to them. I mean, Jesus Christ had to finish. Amen. Because he finished, you and I are here today. Thank you, Lord. Without him finishing his work, we wouldn't be here. Amen. Then if you say, I want to be like Jesus, right? There's such a rhetoric terms out there, you know, WWJD, right? I mean, those are the people, they don't finish anything, right? <laughs> like when time gets tough, they just quit. Yeah. yeah, I'm getting persecuted at work, so no more. I'm getting persecuted at home, no more. I mean, think about it. If you yourself cannot endure and persevere and finish at home, there's no hope for those people who's not saved in your household Amen. or your cousins, you know, your family members. Because Lord finished not just for you. Lord finished for every single person, yes. every lost soul out there. And one of the preachers preached on, you know, tears and, you know, famous chapter and verse, right? Psalms 126, 5 and 6. You got to shed some tears, right, for the lost souls out there. Sometimes you can't finish. You can't close that deal because there's no tears in your life. You're so hearted. Like, when you see those souls out there, lost souls out there, like, you don't really care anymore. I guarantee you, when you first gotten saved, especially older crowd, right? Younger crowd who grows up in church, many times they take it for granted, you know, because it was handed to them every single Sunday. And especially you have Bible-believing parents, you know, they don't want to go any other day without them, you know, knowing for sure and accepting Christ. But many of our, you know, people who come after they become adult, they appreciate, especially if you've been wondering about seeking the truth, Maybe you were in Jehovah's Witness. Maybe you were, you know, Mormon. Maybe you're in Catholicism. Maybe you're Presbyterian, Calvinistic. And maybe you didn't even believe in anything. And you found the truth. And then years of searching for some people is so precious to you. And what's the first thing you do? You start telling everybody that you know, right? If your husband's not saved, you talk to your husband. If your wife's not saved, you talk to your wife. If your children are not saved, you talk to them. Your mom, your dad, your grandma, grandpa, your cousin, even your closest friends. That's like the first thing you do because you love their soul. And you want their salvation to be finished. But where are you now? Right? I mean, a lot of times... People know it in the head. You and I know all, I mean, this very well. It's not something that you've never heard before. But it can't stay on your brain. It has yeah. to translate down to your heart. Amen. Your heart is supposed to go out there. Your heart is supposed to pray. Your heart is to be ready to yeah. give an answer to those lost souls out there. I'm not sure if you're doing soul winning because to show off to people, because it's part of your life, you know, your robotic sense? Or do you do it because you truly have love for the lost souls out there? If you want to finish, you have to have love for the lost souls out there. Amen. And, you know, that gets to you, you know. I mean, I think, you know, our good brother Randy in Lancaster, you know, he preached. A lot of preachers don't get preached on, you know. Unless you go out of your way. Because you're preaching, you know, you're preparing your material, you know. And then, you know, some people out on the street doing street preaching, they haven't gone or they haven't heard preaching for like 10 plus years. Every human being 
is a human being, you know, right? Yes. I mean, including Dr. Ruckman's a human being too. You know, some people think that you know he's a superhuman. He is kind of, you know, but he's a human being first. Yes. I'm a human being. You're a human being. Everybody needs preaching, yes. and everybody needs conviction in their heart Amen. every week. And when you think about it, man, whenever I take things, the word of God, preaching, prayer, not to my heart, there's no fruit. There's no result. Right. There's no joy. Up there, and especially here, you know, coming next month, one thing that defines, to me, Bible-believing ministry is that you see brethren from different ministries, different local independent churches, but it's like they're like your long-lost brother and sister. Amen. You have same father. Yeah. You know, I have a brother up there, you know, Brother Randall, you know, who got him close. You know, I seen him a long time ago when you know, Dr. Ruckman visited San Pedro Church. And then, you know, he got married, and then he's doing his thing, you know. We always joke with each other, like, you know, you're my brother from different mother, right? It's not only for certain people, it's for everybody. I mean, we all have the same father, if you accept Christ as your Lord and Savior. Don't you want to finish with as many brothers in Christ as possible in your life? I mean, imagine at the judgment... I mean, first of all, I mean, judgment is going to cry. You'll be judged for it. But at the great white throne judgment, because you did not finish your course, you see so many people because they didn't finish. They're all being sent down to hell because of you. Yes. And because of me. I mean, do you know the seriousness of that judgment? They're not going to be sent down to hell. Just for 10 years, 100 years, 1,000 years, 10,000 years, 100,000 years, million years, billion years, trillion years, or gazillion years, they'll be sent down for infinity, for all eternity. Forever. Then, don't you think that every single soul is super precious? Yes. Don't you think that you have to finish what you've started? Amen. I mean, I know some of you are struggling because people that you're witnessing to are so stubborn. Yes, they are. Yeah. I mean, I agree. Maybe they have certain background. It's really hard. Yes. yes. But does that mean that you're going to stop? Does that mean that can you say I finished what I needed to do, what I started witnessing to my Mom, my dad, grandma, grandpa, my cousins, you know, my closest friends, because they just rejected you once, twice, thrice. You got to continue. Until they cut you off completely, even then you still continue. You know their address, right? Yeah. You send them, the, you know, post. I mean, not many people do it, right? You know, send them through USPS, yes. right? Or send them through FedEx, UPS. They're like, oh, it's a special, you know, and then you open, you know, they might cuss at you or whatnot, but you're planting the seed. Amen. You have to continue to do it. You know, you'll never finish. Part of your job is to continuously planting the seed. You know, you and I will never finish planting the seed until we're up in heaven. Yes. So we got to continue. Amen. I mean, today I have to plant a seed. Tomorrow I have to plant a seed. I, day after, I have to plant a seed, right? You have to, if you, you don't try to finish your race, people around you, especially if you're the source of faith and truth, if you're the only Bible that they see, then they're going to wither. You know, sometimes you're, like I said, when you first get saved, you're so gung-ho. It's almost like you're helping. You're helping the Lord water them. And then they're trying to grow, those who are saved and unsaved, you know, they want to get saved. But suddenly, you're not that source anymore. You don't provide anything, right? Like, you're like a dead rock. Uh, we're coming down from, you know, Berkeley. I mean, this huge, you know, trucks have boulders, you know, boulders. You know, they're carrying it. 
And those must be like several tons, right? Yes. You become that boulder. I can't move anymore. Your heart is so hardened. It's heavier than those boulders. It's like, at least they can be transported by those big rigs, right? But you, your heart and heart, we can't really transport it. I can't do anything. Your mom and dad can't do anything. It's only you, you could do something about it. Even though it might be hardened for many, many years, you still have a chance to break it. Yes. Break it apart and make it movable. That's why Christianity is great in that you have multiple chances. Amen. Just remember, you still have a chance to finish. Amen. Why have you stopped in your walk with the Lord? Why? Obviously, we have many, many good answers, right? You love the world. You've given yourself to the devil. You're too selfish. You can't get out of your sinful ways. You know, you have victim mentality. You know, I'm not, I'm good for nothing. You know, I, I think as Christians, you have to get rid of that mentality. Yes. Like that, you're a victim. Yeah. Victims cannot, if you have victim mentality, you cannot finish anything. No. I'm sorry. Amen. Right? Even if some of the horrible things that happen to you in your life, if you stay in that victim state without relying on Jesus Christ to help you get through it, you just got to be stuck there. You might be saved, praise the Lord, right? But you yeah. don't do anything. But that's what devil wants, though. True. The devil loves it when he sees Christians never finish. Yeah. <laughs> uh, can you imagine? Like I'm witnessing to a soul. You know, we have a visitor, you know, they, you know, they want to learn about how to get saved. I'm like, I'm witnessing, you know, I'm at the Revelation 21.8. And then now they're super scared, you know. I'm a liar, you know, I'm a sinner, I'm going to burn in hell. I'm like, you know what? Say, you know, hey, John, you know, that's it. Yeah, go read your Bible. Yeah, I can't finish, you know. You know I got some other stuff to do. You know? It's like, well, what do you think? Like, hey, I want to go to heaven, and I don't want to burn in hell. I'm sorry. I have other things to do. I can't finish. I never committed to finish. Can you imagine if someone did that to you? If Lord was like, you know what? You know, Father God, I can't finish. You know, the, the sins of the world, everything, it's just too much. You know, I mean, shedding blood for all this, you know, human beings. Uh, and I can't. What if Lord did not finish? I mean, Lord said, it is finished. Amen. Isn't that so significant to you? Yes. As human beings, as Christians, you and I have to finish. It doesn't matter. If you hurt people in the past, it doesn't matter. You get right and you finish. Amen. Right? Yes. If you are lazy in the past, you become diligent and you finish. Yes. If you're unfaithful in the past, you become faithful now and finish. Amen. I mean, if your heart wasn't right, if it wasn't in the right place, put it in the right place yes. and yes. finish. I mean, always it comes down to the heart. I mean, now going to, you know, like our point number one, right? You have to finish faithfully. You have to finish faithfully. You cannot be unfaithful. There's no way you could finish being unfaithful. Can marriage last if two people are unfaithful? It's not. Can marriage last if one person is unfaithful? Most likely not. So in order to finish, you have to be faithful. Amen. You have to be faithful in everything that you do. Not just Sundays, not just Wednesday evenings, not just Friday evenings, some Saturday afternoons. You have to be faithful 24-7. Yes. Reading your Bible shows that you're faithful. You have to read it every day. Praying shows that you're faithful. You have to do it every day. Witnessing, you have to do it every day. Yes. You and I have to have a balanced meal. We have to have a balanced life. In order to finish faithfully, you have to maintain it. Be consistent. You can't be only moved during special event time. Summer camp, blowout, and jubilee, right? Yeah. 
and New Year's, right? Or see your crowd, right? Easter and Christmas time. And rest of the year, what are you doing? Are you being unfaithful? You have to be faithful in all that you do. Yes. And what does that mean? You don't want to cheat on your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Amen. as bride of Christ, right? Yes. If me seeing certain things will jeopardize my relationship with Lord Jesus Christ, I got to stop it. Amen. I got to say no, right? If me jeopardize my relation with Lord Jesus Christ by stepping my foot at some places, then I can't go, right? Yes. If me listening to certain things that would jeopardize my relationship with Lord Jesus Christ, I got to stop listening to it. Yes. Because seeing is very, very dangerous as well as hearing. Amen. Sometimes you hear things and it sticks on your head yeah. Yeah. over and over and over and over. Yes. And it's not amazing grace. <laughs> A lot of times it's worldly wicked things. That's right. Right? A lot of times it's wicked sayings, wicked jokes, you know. Yes. Then if you're going to stain those things, you can't finish. No. Right. So finish. If you're going to finish well, you have to finish faithfully. And next thing, point number two, you have to finish fearlessly. You and I have to be fearless. You know, Joshua 1, 9 says, what? Be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. Be strong. Yes. Be courageous. Then you could finish. You know, I know many times children can finish when they're afraid, when they, delight, when they rely on their parents, right? Yes. So we're driving down the central California, and there's been a lot of rain. So I saw some lot of, you know, swamps out there because of, you know, a lot of rain last winter. And if you are in Florida, if you see swamp, what's usually there? Crocodile. Crocodile, yeah. alligators, right? Yes. You know, I mean, alligator, crocodile, you name it. You have like some, you know, monster fishes out there, right? And you're a five-year-old boy, five-year-old girl, and you want to walk through that swamp. But it's so scary, right? Yes. So who do you hold hand a lot of times? Your mom and your daddy. Right. And you have that assurance and that you're just walking and walking, right? Even though you're still scared because you see this, you know, flies flying around, these mosquitoes making these bubbles, right? You're like, oh, man, you get scared. Every step of the way, you think it's alligator somewhere trying to bite you, right? But you know you're safe as you're holding your parents' hand. Christian walk, you and I are supposed to be fearful. You and I are weak. Devil's strong. World's strong. Your flesh is strong. Yes. Don't ever think that you're better than the devil. I mean, those are the people who usually get used by the devil and becomes the devil themselves. We're talking about saved people, you know, who splits the church in half, you know, because they are know-it-all and they know everything. Can you believe it? There are folks out there, they're, they think, I'm better than Dr. Ruckman, you know, I mean, whom God used to preserve King James Bible, you know, in this generation, have all these commentaries. And funny thing is that they're saying, like, same thing, you know, about Dr. Gene Kim, you know, whom a lot of people see and get saved and grow in the Word of God. Why? A lot of times because of jealousy and envy, right? Yeah. They're not fearful of God. They're fearful of human beings. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, if you go back in the history, you know, this you know, might offend some people, even Charles Spurgeon. You know, he has some Calvinistic views. Why would he say such a thing? Because a human being trying to show some knowledge. Why do people, why do you say certain things? Because you want to show some knowledge to human beings. Those are recipe for not finishing fearlessly. Those are recipe for your own destruction. 
If you really want to finish fearlessly, you have to rely on the Lord. All times. And you have to be scared a little bit. Yeah. Because you're scared of yourself. You should never be comfortable with yourself. No. Once you get too complacent and too comfortable, then you're like, ah, you know, Lord's going to take care of it. But you saying Lord's going to take care of it, it's like you don't do anything. You just at your required. You feel like you're spoiled bread, that Lord has to provide everything. Even when you should talk, he has to talk. When you should work, he has to work. You know, when you should read, he has to read for you. Can you imagine? You're like, Lord Jesus, you're my savior. Read the Bible for me. <laughs> I mean, we're laughing because that's absurd. You have to do it. I have to do it. So healthy fear is really good. Yes. Fear of God is really good. With fear of God, you could finish fearlessly. With fear of God, you're not going to fear human beings. Right? You know, sometimes when you're trying to pass out track and sometimes when you're trying to witness, it's really hard. You're so nervous. Your heart is pumping. Yes. Right? You know, 10,000 times per second, I don't know, because you're trying to witness with this, you know, hell's angel, Mongols, you know, this guy from the ghetto, I mean, showing some guns or something, yeah. have like these tears, right? You know, how many people he killed and stuff, right? Five. But the Lord says, go talk to him. Yes. I'm so scared, right? But are you trusting in yourself? I mean, this guy's like six feet six, you know, 300 pounds, right? I mean, you're no match for that guy no. if there's any fighting, right? But you trust in the Lord. Yes. With the fear of God, you walk to him, give him a track, and ask. You know, if you were to die right now, would you be in heaven? Would you be in hell? You're like, yeah, I'm going to go to heaven. How do you know you're going to go to heaven? <laughs> and then you start it. Many times when you think, yeah, you see this. 12-year-old boy or girl, ah, they're in elementary school. They're going to listen to me no matter what. When you're fearless, and then you try to give them a track, and the first word they come out is a cuss word, right? <laughs> like blankety blanket out of my face. You know, I don't want that. So don't, you know, make your decision upon how people look like right. or how you feel like, right? Yes. You have to just trust in the Lord, and if Bible says to do it, you just go and do it. Amen. Right? You just have to. Amen. Then you could finish fearlessly. I mean, many of the forefathers of faith in the Word of God, they rely on the Lord, and they could honestly say that, man, I was a big-time chicken on my own. But because the Lord's on my side, you know, who can't be against me? That's why they could march on and fight and fight and fight. You know, our Christian walk is battle every single day. That's right. You have to rely on someone to help you in the battle. Right. I, again, I say you have to rely on someone, and it's an action verb. You have to take action. You can't just sit there and ask the Lord, Lord, save that person. It's good, but if you have ability to do something about it, you have to go. Oh, you know, my wife's going to cuss at me. You want your wife to cuss at you and burn in hell forever without confronting it? Your husband, your children, your grandma, grandpa, your parents, your closest friend, you have to. We hear so many tragedies in the world. Think about Maui fire, right? Devastating. And when those fires spread, you hear people's, you know, accounts. They have maybe a few seconds to survive. Jump on the water, get out. But many of them couldn't because they so fast. Imagine those were your neighbors, right? Imagine those were your family members. Because you're fearful of how they might think of you, you don't give them the gospel. Right then you should really be fair, fearful at the judgment seat of Christ. Yes. 
That's why if you want to finish fear, fearlessly, be strong and courageous in the Lord. Know that you're nothing, less than nothing. Know that you can't do anything. Just rely on the Lord. Amen. Lord, I sure cannot do anything, but I want to be used by you. Amen. Use me, Lord. Yes. Right? Sometimes you could stutter, right? Excuse me. Oh, here's Amen. the church friend, and they're like the nicest person, right? I mean, they, they could be the meanest looking person, but they're like the nicest person. And they're like, okay, can you tell me about what you just given me? Right? That's how many, many brethren have testimonies like that. Why? One thing common. They did fear, fearlessly relying on the Lord. That's how you have to finish race. And lastly, you have to finish focused. And who are you going to focus on? Right? Let's turn to Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12. You have to have a finish line. And you have to look at that finish line always so that you won't be distracted by things of the world, the, what devil shoots at you. Hebrews chapter 12. We're going to look at verse 1, 2. The Bible says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Verse 2. This is how you're going to finish focus. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. You know how you could finish? You look unto Lord Jesus Christ, you just continue. Amen. Don't look at anybody else. It's like this. If the Lord says it's good, it's good. I don't care. I, mean, I don't care what you think, right? If the Lord says it's good in his word, that's it. I'm going to be focused on exactly what the Lord wants me to do and his will, right? Then you continue. Don't let anything else bother you. You got to take up your cross and continue. Right? Right. And the only way you're going to endure the shame and the ridicule and all these things that world and the devil and flesh throws at you, you just have to be focused. I mean, think about it. Sometimes your health will drag you down. Sometimes your finances. Sometimes it's your relationship. Then if you turn around, you can't go anywhere. Don't tell me that you looking at this way is going to help you go straight to that exit, right? You're going to hit somewhere. You're going to hit something, and you're going to get hurt, and you're going to fall, and it's going to delay you. And some of you are in this state right now. Your focus has been at the wrong place the whole time. Your focus always has been your trials, your tribulations, just you, 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 you. That's why you're not finishing anything. If you're Focusing on Lord Jesus Christ, you just look unto him. No matter what life throws at you, you're going to finish. Because you're continuously moving. You're continually seeking him. Because, like, if the Lord says to endure harness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ, I'm just going to endure. Yes. People are going to say, quit, 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 you know. Just quit. No more. Just quit. And... Sadly, some people just quit. Does that, does that show that you're finished? No. I mean, the best, most worthwhile is that, man, I've taken some detours in my life, but I'm straightening it out again, and I'm going forward. I'm focused on the Lord. You know, I'm, I'm really sorry to the Lord. You know, I miss some of the, you know, Road because I was unfocused yeah. with desires of the world, you know, with lust of my flesh, right? And then I, like my pride of the eyes and stuff. So like, but greatest thing again is that if you're still alive and you're breathing, you could finish. I mean, you could finish this race. You could finish it well. You could actually say, I have kept the faith, you know? And you could actually look for that crown of righteousness. Right? Which you and I should definitely get, right? If you expect the Lord to come today. 
Yes. Your life has to show that, Lord, coming today as well. Wouldn't you want to be found, you know, you want to be found faithful, yes. you know? That, I mean, Lord, you want, don't you want Lord to say, well done, that good and faithful servant? Amen. I mean, I mean that would be my goal in my life. In order to do that, I have to finish. In order for you to do that, you have to finish. Finish faithfully, you know, finish fearlessly, and finish no matter what happens. Focus on the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, many times our life is full of just not finishing. We're a bunch of quitters, Lord. We say we're going to do this for you, Lord. We don't finish it. We say we're going to do this for others. We don't do it. And especially when it comes to witnessing to others, Lord God, we don't finish. Some of us might have started. Some of us may have never started in the first place. But you said it is finished because you finished your work. And we are to follow in you, in your footsteps, Lord God. Why are we not even finishing things that we're supposed to. Help us to be focused on you, Lord, always. Until you come back, Lord, help us to be found faithful, being fearless in you, fearful of you, but not fearful of anything else. Lord God, we're weak. I'm weak. We can't do anything on our own. That's why we rely on and trust, and trust in you, and we want to find strength in you, Lord, nothing else. Help us to stay humble. Help us to daily break our boulders in our heart. Make it soft so that we could get closer to you, appreciate the personal relationship that we can have with you, Lord. And above all, even so come, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.